Are you cooking bananas? Would you expect me to eat them raw? Well, that is kind of the way people normally eat them. Since when? Since forever. In this video, we're gonna break down the difference between shooting JPEG and RAW. Okay, so if you're shooting JPEG, basically what's happening is you're dialing in your settings that you want and taking your picture. And then when you push play, what you see is what you get. So basically what's happening is when you push the shutter release, the camera then has to calculate and compute all of the settings that you've applied. So that's your exposure, your white balance, maybe if you've added sharpness or picture styles like filters to it, it takes all that information and then it kind of bakes it into the image. So it applies that edit to the image that you took. It then compresses the file into a JPEG, which means there's also gonna be some information that's lost. So basically, if you like editing on a little screen, like as you're taking pictures, then by all means, go for JPEG. RAW, on the other hand, is the unprocessed, uncompressed data that was captured by the image sensor, meaning that it preserves or retains a lot more information in your highlights, your shadows, and your color space. So basically, when you're shooting RAW, the camera's not baking all of your settings into the image right in camera. It's saving everything as information, allowing you to edit it later, which we'll learn more about in just a second. Now, this doesn't mean when you're shooting raw, you can just go around taking pictures willy-nilly because you can fix them later. You still wanna dial in your settings to get them looking as close to the image that you want in the end as possible. It'll make your editing a lot easier. To choose between JPEG and raw in camera, you're gonna have to go into your menu and then go to something that's called picture quality settings. In there, you'll see many different options that you can choose from, even within JPEG. So for JPEG, we can choose L, M, or S. That would be large, medium, or small. And that really refers to how big you want to print or display your images. So you'd use L if you want a larger print and S if it's gonna be like on your phone or on social media or something. But that also means that L would take up more space on your SD card because it's storing a lot more data. The benefits of using JPEG is that overall their file sizes are much smaller than RAW, which means they'll transfer from your SD card to your computer much faster and they will open anywhere. They're a much more compatible file. They will open up and be viewable pretty much no matter what. It just means that they are ready to share immediately if you want. As far as RAW goes, your choices will depend on the newness and quality of your camera. So if you have an entry level camera or an older camera like this Canon T6, then you're really only gonna have one choice, which is RAW. But if you have a higher end camera, you're probably gonna have multiple quality levels in RAW, similar to how we had multiple quality levels in JPEG, L, M, and S, in the entry-level Canon T6. And as I kind of just alluded to when talking about JPEG, RAW files are much bigger, like at least you know four times bigger than JPEG files, and they are not immediately compatible. So you might find when you put them on your computer that they don't open up in your regular like image viewer. You're actually gonna need special software that can decode the RAW file in order for you to view and edit the image, like Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw, Capture One, you know, programs like that. Which basically means that unlike JPEG, where the image was processed in camera, these specialized software programs allow you to process the footage on your computer the way that you want. And then if you really want, there is actually in pretty much all cameras, there's also an option to use JPEG and RAW, so that every time you take a picture, boom, it's gonna take a JPEG image that processes it in camera, and it's gonna capture the RAW image that you can deal with later. So if you're not taking like a whole bunch of pictures, you don't mind having double of everything, then maybe try that one. But you probably shouldn't make your decision just yet. First, we have to go through the editing process so I can show you the power and control we have over a RAW file compared to the lack of control we have over a JPEG image. But first, let's just do a quick rundown of what makes JPEG different from RAW in terms of the technical specs of the file. So a JPEG is captured at 8-bit or 256 RGB shades or levels, which equates to 16 million colors, which is pretty good. But now if we look at RAW, RAW is captured in 12 or maybe even 14-bit, and at 12-bit, it has 4,096 RGB shades or levels, which is 68 billion colors, so far more. 
When we compare dynamic range between the two, JPEGs is a lot lower, which means we have less information in the darkest and brightest spots of our image, which means when editing a RAW file, we can recover more information in the highlights and shadows because it has a higher dynamic range. For example, if we try and edit this JPEG image by bringing up the shadows to make them brighter, you're going to notice that the image really starts to fall apart. You're going to notice these like dark blotches. It's almost going to look like a posterization effect. On the other hand, if we try and do the same thing to the raw image, you'll see that it actually keeps a lot more information in the shadows, so it looks just a lot more clean and detailed. Plus, you won't have a crazy color shift like we did with JPEG. Recovering the highlights of a JPEG is even more problematic. You either can't bring back any information when it's too blown out, or your image just starts to look like trash. But as you can see when working with the raw file, we can actually bring some of those highlights back successfully without destroying the image this time. As far as white balance goes, there's no contest here. RAW just destroys JPEG. If we look at this JPEG image that has the wrong white balance and try and correct it, we're actually trying to manipulate what's already baked in, like the colors that are already baked into that image, and you're just kind of tweaking color temperatures and stuff. It's not really realistic. You're just trying to manipulate to get the best you can. But if we go over to the RAW file, you'll actually see that if we click this little drop down here, that all the same white balance settings that we could choose in camera are now still available in the program here in Adobe Camera Raw. So I can just pick a new white balance, the one that it was supposed to be, and boom, white balance is fixed and you're all good to go. For grading purposes, RAW will let you push your colors to extremes without destroying your image as well. So essentially just remember that JPEG already has kind of a baked in look on the image that you're just kind of tweaking, which limits how much you can actually edit. Whereas RAW is kind of a clean slate that you can do whatever you need to do to get the image that you want with certain limitations. All right, so obviously what we learned here is that RAW is far superior than JPEG. So then why even bother to put JPEG in the camera? Well, because basically it comes down to your workflow not which one's better or worse. If you're somebody that prefers to have the camera process the image and you're gonna have smaller file sizes that are easily shareable and you can still edit them no problem, then pick JPEG. But if you're somebody that wants full control over your image, like you wanna process it on the computer afterwards, not the camera, and you're not concerned about file size and you have the software that's capable of doing that, then obviously pick RAW. Now, obviously you don't need to exclusively shoot one or the other forever. I mean, some situations might be better suited for JPEG shooting, like a family barbecue or something, while others might be better suited for RAW, like a wedding. That tip's especially important when you're shooting like an event that's outside where like the sun might be changing, you might be in shadows and then bright. If you're shooting JPEG, you're gonna be constantly like a new spot, changing your settings, boom, taking a picture. You go to a new place and you're like, ah, oh, darn, different lighting, change again. If you're shooting in RAW, you can get it kind of good for all the kind of different lighting and then just go and hammer away. And then when you get into post afterwards, you can fix them all up to make them look all nice. On a side note, if you're shooting something like sports, just be aware that your camera can fire off a whole bunch of pictures in a row before the camera's buffer taps out. But when shooting RAW, your camera is going to be much more limited, especially on older cameras or entry-level models. Oh, another thing for RAW to consider is that it's a great way to future-proof your photography. So maybe you're not actually that great at photography right now, or maybe just not even that great at processing or editing your images. You might actually want to consider using RAW then instead, because you'll have the RAW file so that when you get better at editing in the future, you can then go back to that file and edit it the way that you want. So maybe consider that as well. All right, so there you go. That's a quick breakdown between JPEG and RAW. Pick the one that works best for your workflow. Have a good one. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and I'll stop pointing at you.